All right, why don't we get started here? So thanks everyone for joining the session here on um, our iTrack 365 solutions for COVID-19. So a quick round of introductions. Um, my name's Darren Houston. So I've been with Neo Systems. Oh man, uh, going on almost 10 years here. Um, you know, I, I help on lots of areas in the in the company. My title is Solutions Architect. Um, you know, I help with the sales side. You know, support projects, um, consulting, some technology. Um, but I've really been working in the health and safety space um, um, regarding software for probably 18 years now. So I was um, before my tenure at um, you know iTrack 365. Um, I was with another company there for about eight or nine years, also doing doing safety software. Um, we also have joining us um, Michelle. So she's our uh, resident um, uh, health and safety specialist. Um, so she just um, helps support um, us and our product um, and, and brings the uh, health and safety knowledge that we need to make the, the product better. And then I'll let uh, Kasim, um, who's also here, introduce himself. So uh, my name is Kasim Arafi. I am a uh, recent graduate from the University of Calgary. I've been with the iTrack 365 team for the last, uh, I think, seven months now. Uh, pulled on as the Power BI guru, and now I'm slowly, you know, mixing that with my customer support. So if there's a question regarding the uh, software, you're most likely going to be led to me. Cool. Thanks, Kasim. And just a reminder that every time we say Neo Systems, take us. That's five bucks that we need to donate. So Neo Systems. <laughs> I'm going to be doing that a lot. It's going to be fun. Green's, our accountant is going to hate me. All right, so uh, so what we're going to do today. Uh, so we're going to show you our process flows um, that we built within this uh, COVID-19 environment. Um, you know, we'd also love your your feedback too, right? So if you have any any feedback, um, you know, please post it. Again, you know, COVID-19, the pandemic's rapidly changing. It's pretty fluid. Um, obviously, we're, you know, we've got some enhancements planned to this environment too. Um, but, you know, if, if you have any thoughts, let us know. Um, we'll also show you the, um, you know, the Power BI dashboards of reporting that um, Kasim built, and then we'll run through a bit of Q&A. So, you know, what do we do? Well, um, you know, when COVID-19 was starting to make its way, you know, around the world, um, you know, we made a decision at iTrack 365 to, you know, do something to help. So initially we put together this environment um, just so that our customers could have access to, you know, some of these COVID-19 process flows. Um, and then, you know, we worked with Microsoft to get some co-funding so that uh, we were able to, um, you know, allow anyone, you know, out there, um, you know, in the world, right, to, to use this environment. Um, so what we did was we really put together these process flows that um, helps companies and employees um, you know, run COVID-19 activities, right? Whether that's, you know, stuff you need from working from home or essential workers before you go to work or even corporate level things like, you know, inspections, um, business continuity plans, things like that. Um, and it also allows, you know, um, companies to um, collect this data centrally in an electronic format, report on it, um, you know, manage corrective actions, things like that. Um, you know, obviously risk is is a big thing with COVID-19, not only from, you know, exposure risk, but also when it comes to, you know, mental health and well-being and all that. So you'll see bits and pieces in there on that. Um, and also, you know, again, we've got a, an awesome uh, health and safety community. Um, so, you know, some of our customers also contributed to these, these uh, process flows. Um, and, you know, we're happy to share them with you. So before I go on to the demo, just want to quickly say, you know, what is our publicly accessible offering? Um, well, really, it's a free offering, right? We we spun up this environment and we put uh, processes in place where we can onboard organizations into this environment and keep the data segregated so that, you know, organizations that don't have, you know, electronic system or don't have any uh, processes to, you know, to help manage COVID-19, um, you know, you can contact us, we'll get you spun up and, and you can start using this using this right away. Uh, so really it's it's uh, it's a shared environment, but again, your data is segregated through security. Um, you know, each company gets uh, two logins. One is um, kind of an administrator or manager login. 
um, and then the other login is for a bunch of mobile users. Um, and then you also get a Power BI pack, right, that you can use to, to do your reporting. So if you want access, there's the email there, COVID-19 at neosystems.com. So you can just um, send, a, send a message to that and uh, we'll reach out and, and get you spun up. Uh, one other thing I'll mention too is part of the process of spinning you up, um, you know, if you supply us with an, uh, your list of employees, you know, we'll also upload them into the system too, um, because, you know, employees are very centric to the system um, and you'll see how that happens during the demo. So what are process flows? So really process flows, think of them like uh, forms on steroids, right? Um, you know, it's a way to run, you know, collect data, run it through processes, you know, have logic and other things around it, you know, um, find corrective actions, risk, hazards, all that kind of stuff, um, manage it, and then close these things out and report on them. Um, so when we built this environment, we really focused around what I'd call three groups or three areas. Um, really, we, we built these process flows around, you know, a company or HSE perspective. Um, and then we also built them around, you know, um, like a home or remote worker, you know, what stuff they would need to do on a daily and weekly basis. And then also field workers or what you can also call, you know, folks that were either essential workers or, you know, workers that do, you know, do have to go either, you know, into the office or, you know, get out there and, and interact, um, you know, with, um, with the the public or, or other folks. Um, again, talked about, you know, it's it's available if you're an iTrack customer, like we'll get these things into your iTrack environment, no charge. If you're not an iTrack customer, again, reach out and we'll set you up, no charge. Um, it's got some simple workflows. Um, so basically you tag your supervisor and, you know, they'll get emails and that if if certain forms come in or, or if there's actions that are, that are open. Um, you know, we're really at version one now. Um, we're working on version two here. So again, you know, any feedback that you have, um, you know, we'll help incorporate that into, into version two. Um, here's just a big list of um, the ones that we did. Um, again, I will run through this um, in the portal and, and show you what these things are. But um, just real quick, you know, we got a business continuity plan, which is really you know, with this pandemic, you know, are you doing the things you need to do um, to continue to run your business? And if not, you know, what do you need to continue to run run your business? Uh, we've got an operational impact assessment. So this be like more a department level, right? So assuming, you know, um, you, you start having uh, workers infected with COVID, at what point can't you operate, you know, your department anymore? Uh, and, you know, what support or what uh, materials or whatever do you need to, to keep operating? We got a cleaning checklist, you know, so this is a way for workers to say, you know, what are they going to be cleaning slash disinfecting and are you uh, doing it right? We got uh, disinfectant practices all, which is really, you know, if, if you're using chemicals, uh, making sure that the right review and approvals are in place so that, um, you know, these chemicals are vetted uh, by someone in your organization as, you know, you can use them and, and how you're using them is appropriate. Uh, the pre-work assessment is really, you know, the daily workers that, you know, have to go in and that, um, you know, they're doing a pre-assessment and making sure that they're authorized to go into work. Interaction log is really cool. This is like contact tracing, right? So people who are, you know, uh, interfacing with other employees or third parties, um, making sure that you're doing, you're recording who you're interacting with so that if you do uh, follow with COVID, um, you can do um, tracing on who you interacted with. Daily check-in is just, you know, either a home worker or uh, uh, another worker, um, essential worker. This is just, you know, where, where are they? Where are they doing? You know, any uh, mental health issues, things like that, checking up on that. Workplace inspection. So, you know, working from home, you know, am I set up to be ergonomic, right? Things like that. Um, and then a few other ones here, alternate work location requests. So if you need a work to work somewhere else, right, they can get approval for that. If they need to travel, same thing, approval for that. And then we threw in a few just kind of more generic uh, health and safety processes like, you know, a way to run your safe daily safety meetings, a way to, you know, record incidents. Um, and then we threw in some COVID-19 specific stuff in the instance, um, a way to add a quick action, right? If you need a quick corrective action or something. Uh, and then uh, a f uh, process flow to, you know, uh, request support, whether that be technical, you know, whatever. 
So I will stop the PowerPoint there and let me jump into the demo here. So first off, like I said, um, you know, you get a, when you sign up for this environment, you get a login. So both from the uh, portal side, um, which is um, our, our web um, portal, so that's where the administrators or the managers or the um, health and safety reps will, will be working in. Uh, mainly, I'll show that too. Um, they, but you also get uh, a mobile login, which you can distribute to all your um, other employees, um, and then they can run the stuff through through mobile. So here's all my grouping. So you can see I've got the company stuff, the essential stuff, um, employee stuff. Um, I'll just run you quickly through what iTrack Mobile looks like here. So if I open up the uh, the company uh, process flows, you know I've got my cleaning checklist here. So this was one application for mobile that would work really well. You know I'm walking around with my mobile device um, doing my you know cleaning, disinfecting. Um, this is where I would you know enter one of these forms. So maybe I'm working on the lunchroom and the office washrooms. So check those off, and I'll click the check mark to go into the form. What the form's done now is it's opened up the lunchroom. Uh, uh, checklist and the washrooms checklist for me here. And you'll find that um, on these forms, a lot of them are, are very standard too, the, the look and feel of the header here. Um, so I can add comments, I can add my area of facility that you know I'm, I'm working in. I can take uh, you know GPS snapshots or add an address or whatever I need. Uh, but let me get into the inspection here. So I'm working on the lunchrooms, I click edit. You can see, you know, we can do things uh, here like, you know, pre-fill out um, the inspections. Um, I can also do something like, you know, set it all to NA if I wanted, uh, or I can just keep going through here and, you know, one by one selecting these things. So as I do my inspection, right, I just go through and, and tap these things off. I can also add other things too. So if I open these up, I can add a finding, I can take pictures, things like that, um, you know, and then the findings can lead to corrective actions, and then there's a way to, you know, manage the whole you know, open and, and doing and closing of, of corrective actions. The other thing too is with mobile, not only do you get all these process flows, but then, you know, with documents, right? If you need us to upload any any documents for you, uh, we can we can do that too. So they'd be available on the mobile um, if required. So let me close out mobile and then I will open up the uh, the portal here and show you the rest of these process flows. Um, so when you log into the portal, um, you know, this is what you would see, uh, you know, activities, you know, would be any, um, you know, actions that are open. Um, you've got some quick links over here, you know, so if you need to contact us for support, you click this. Um, if you need to get into your Power BI uh, reports that we give you for the environment, you click this. Um, and if you just need to look at, you know, all the open forms or process flows, you know, you can click this. Uh, you can also go into the forms area here. And then there you go, you kind of see the similar list that you saw on mobile. The one difference is there's more process flows available here than you had in mobile, just because some things don't really make sense to be done on a mobile, like, you know, your business continuity plan or, you know, your operational impact assessment, right? These are things that, you know, you would probably be filling out as uh, managers or, or um, you know, business owners, not, uh, you know, mobile employees. So let's uh, look at some more of these. So I've got some essential mobile worker ones here. Um, let's open up the pre-work assessment. So this is, you know, someone having to go to work now. I'm saying, yeah, I'm authorized to go to work. But before I do that, I need to um, do a self-assessment. So I say, yeah, I'm cleared for work. Um, you know, this one specifically, you know, was built where there's going to be secondary medical screening on site, you know, whether that's taking temperatures or, or whatnot. But, um, you know, obviously, if you don't have that, then you don't need to worry about that secondary uh, medical screening. So I choose my classification. I'm cleared for work. Click new four. And I go. So I, you know, it's entered by, you know, me. Um, you know, I could choose someone else in the organization. Um, I would want to choose my supervisor or manager or whoever get notified that this um, process flow is coming through. You can see over here, right? Here's the status of this one. It goes draft to review. Once it hits review, you know, it's really up for the supervisor or manager to review this and you know 
say you're cleared to come in or not, or you know, deal with any actions that might come out of it. Uh, some of these other process flows might just go draft to close, right? It's just a record, so it just depends on you know what you're doing and you know what uh, what status is this thing will flow through. So let's assume I'll just um, you know pick uh, pick someone from the list. So maybe my manager is David Garcia. You know I can enter uh, you know my location if I want. So address, GPS, or or whatever. Um, I can say you know do I want to review the instructions? Maybe I'm not clear what I have to do. So I say yes, and pops open the instructions here. So it gives me instructions on what I need to do. And then I come down here to the screen screening questionnaire. Now you can see it says to enable this content, say the record. I, I can't work with this yet. So I have to save to create a record in the system. And then once the record's created in the system, now I can do my uh, do my self-assessment. So I click edit and I just go through the self-assessment. So, you know, how do I rate here, right? So I answered everything. And it's saying my results zero. I save and close. And then what the system does now is it calculates um, what the outcome is. So you can see here that I'm cleared for secondary screening. So based on your selection, you're cleared. So that means I can go to work and just do the on-site medical. But let's say you know I was exhibiting some symptoms. So maybe uh, you know I have a cough, I have a runny nose, and I have a fever, right? And I got shortness of breath. You can see the calculation result is now different. I'll hit save and close. You know, now it's telling me presumptive case of COVID. Here I'm exhibiting systems. So it says based on your selection, do not come to the project site, go home, self-isolate for 14 consecutive days, right? So then I can put my comments, I can add a corrective action if I need to. Um, you know, I can add any attachments or supporting documents. You know, this would be more for like, you know, if I've recovered, I've got clearance from my doctor, right? I might put there. Um, and then every form, because again, this is a shared environment, um, you know, you don't have a lot of users. Like a, a lot of our iTrack customers, everyone would be a user, so we would need this. But here, everyone's just kind of like a, using a shared account. So the employee sign off is important because, you know, this tells you that, you know, the person that says they're filling it in is, is really filling it in. I just add my name and, you know, give my signature there. There we go. So I'm done and I can submit this form and, and it goes to my manager and, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll be notified on, you know, next steps or, or any actions I need. Um, the other form that we've got, which is really cool, and you'll see some Power BI on this uh, later on, is the daily interaction log. So the daily interaction log was really created to, um, you know, do contact tracing, right? So if uh, you can see again, this one just goes draft close because it's a simple daily thing that, you know, you want all your, um, you know, people going into work or interacting with, with others to, to fill out, right? So someone might open this up on their mobile or the portal at the beginning of the day and then throughout the day, you know, you're entering, you know, which employees you've physically interacted with today or, uh, you know, if they're not employees, right, if we're not pulling from your employee list, uh, you know, third parties that you're interacting with, right? So if I just click select, you know, I can, you know, choose the employees that, um, that I've been work that I've interacted with today. Uh, and then same thing with third parties, right? I can go in and, and you know, add the third party um, information. And then I submit after I sign off. And then that's just a record in the system. And then again, if let's say I come down with COVID um, and Calson will show you this on the Power BI, you can you know, see you know, all my interactions and then, you know, be able to contact these individuals now and say, yeah, a person you were physically interacting with came down with COVID, you know, maybe you, you should self-isolate for, for the 14-day period. A few other forms, uh, the daily check-in ones, really cool, right? Um, you know, this can be for workers going in or people working from home. I mean, me personally, uh, you know, I'm working from home right now, so, 
you know, I would do one of these daily. And really, it's just a quick check, right? Uh, you know, do I need any support today? Yes or no. You know, have I communicated with people today? Yes or no. Uh, you know, some text on, you know, what does it mean by um, social distancing, hygiene, cleaning, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? Uh, you know, it's a way for work, for workers to say, yeah, here's here's where I am. I'm working from home today and I'm good, right? Or, yeah, you know, I, I, I need some help, right? Or, you know, I'm not feeling good or whatever and, and put the comments in. And then that's going to show up in um, some reporting. And then, you know, that way the organization can, you know, see, you know, who in your organization, um, not only where they're working or what they're doing, but, um, you know, if, if they do need any support, right? And then obviously reach out and, and help those folks. Um, and then the uh, personal workspace inspection is really around, um, you know, doing an inspection on my personal work workspace. So, uh, you know, you can use this in the office, um, you know, um, at work or, you know, this is really great for, for at home too. So it's basically, uh, you know, a, a, an ergonomics inspection saying, you know, for your chair, is your seat height correct? Is your back uh, height correct? You know, keyboard and mouse, right? Are your elbows and all that correct? So. Um, I can tell you after I did this um, one personally, I failed it pretty miserably. Um, so then that gave me uh, permission from the wife to go in and invest in some new uh, <laughs> uh, home office uh, um, equipment. So uh, so I'm all, I'm all set up and good now. And it was uh, because of this form. And then the standard HSC processes, right? So, you know, daily safety meeting. Um, so this one is um, you know, if you're doing daily standups or safety meetings, um, it's really good. Um, you can record who's at those safety me meetings, um, you know, what you discussed. Um, and it's all done through this control here. So if I add a session, um, you know, I can review documents, procedures, discussions, agendas, whatever. Um, or, if, you know, if I just want a discussion, right, just say add, you know, I just say, you know, here's, you know, whatever we, we talked about. Um, mark complete, right? And then, you know, who attended? Um, here's the employees that attended. Uh, here's the third parties that attended, right? And then save and close. And it's just a really easy way to do, to to track, you know, what you're discussing and, and who's who's hearing the message. And then the last thing I'm going to show here. Sorry, my mouse is glitching out a little bit. Uh, is the uh, the instant report? So when you're submitting an instant. Um, you know, you can classify, uh, you know, we can do a environmental incident, a health and safety incident, um, or, uh, you know, acid damage. Um, some of our customers go way beyond this, um, but this is just what we, we've kind of, uh, you know, given to the to the uh, global audience, just, just to help them out. So if I do, maybe it's a health and safety in, um, where, you know, there is some exposure, or maybe there's an injury or it's specific to COVID, right? Um, click new form. And then what you'll notice is um, you're going to get um, things like, you know, is this a first party or third party instance? So you can track things like that, right? Is this uh, related to COVID-19 exposure? Yes, no, right? If I say yes, it opens up more things where, you know, um, select the instant type for COVID, right? Maybe it's uh, infection confirmed and, you know, then it's asking more questions like, you know, was there travel, you know, and what, did you de decontaminate the uh, the area? You know, yes, no, things like that, right? Um, and then when you come down here, you can also do things like, you know, entered um, the personal information of the uh, injured or, or exposed or sick individuals um, in our, what we call, you know, more complex controls, right? So I can click add injured person, um, you know, so I can put in, you know, if they're an employee, I pick from employee list. If they're non employee, I write it in and select, you know, what it is, right? Illness, um, you know, add their contact deal, details, you know, all the other side, like injury details, injury type, action, job experience, you know, all this information I can, I can collect and, and report on. And then I can do my risk too, right? So, you know, if I opened up my, my risk assessment, right? I can say, well, okay, well, an incident happened. So what's my actual risk? Um, all right, we're, we're actually, uh, I forgot about this, we're actually changing over our, our risk matrix to be more COVID uh, specific um, because this was more generic to, um, 
you know, it had injury, but it was, you know, also assets, um, equipment, environment, things like that. We're, we're just changing the sofa now to be specific to um, really COVID. Uh, and then you can do your witness statements and add your attachments and then move this thing on and, and go through, you know, a review, investigate, implement action, close tasks. Uh, and also in, in investigate tasks, you start to open up, uh, you know, root cause analysis and things like that too, right? So you can start to do root cause analysis and and also report on that, which which CAS will show. So I know that's pretty quick. Um, it's kind of a fire hose um, demo of, of what this environment is. Um, but I'd like to pass over to Kasim now, and, and he can um, show you some of the Power BI reporting that we create for this environment. Before I start explaining you know, some of the Power BI reports I've made in specifics to COVID, uh, just go over some basics. Uh, up top for most sheets, it's a uh, date slicer. So you can just drag and drop here, uh, and you'll select you know, uh, in between what dates do you want to see the specific process flows. On the left hand side, you can select other process flows. So if you only want to see the daily check ins, you can click it. And then if you only want to see, you know, Jennifer's, click that as well. And it filters through employee and process flow. Cool. So, uh, and if I do speak too quick and you want me to repeat something, uh, though I won't take offense, just uh, tell me right away. So, first you have the all process flows. This is just a gigantic Excel sheet. You go through all the, uh, you know, all the forms that were submitted. And if you scroll to the right, you know, you see who was assigned to, quote unquote, the status of it. And if you click this little uh, URL here, I'll let this load in the background. Uh, you actually go to the portal and you're able to, you know, log in and see that exact uh, exact process flow that Darren was showing with more information. So if you feel like the Power BI isn't showing enough, you have a quick and seamlessly access in between the portal and Power BI. Uh, you know, the next one, the next two are process flow count and uh, participation. So all this is basically saying is that, okay, out of the process flows that you have, how many are being submitted each, and then out of those process flows, you know, which employee is filling them out the most. Um, and then, you know, who isn't filling out the, uh, the process flows. And as always, you can filter by, you know, uh, process flow groups and then specific process flows on the left hand side here. Uh, I think someone's in the lobby here. I got it. Yeah, just the, the, the pinging. Uh, the next is this action registry. So, you know, let's say you assign, you're doing a business continuity process flow, you assign a task to somebody. Um, this is where it just gets tracked as a line chart. You know, all the green, the green line means the task was completed, and the orange uh, line means the task is overdue, and then the uh, yellow line means, you know, it's, it's due or your upcoming kind of thing, right? Uh, you can always filter by date, by status, priority, process, and as always, you can just drag through the table here to get a bit more information, or if you need to, uh, you know, click the form link, click the form link. Next is the COVID assessment stats. Now, this is a bit of work in progress, just with this classification name, but the idea still stands. You know, you're looking at the reported date, and you know, you're saying that, okay, uh, Barbara, she filled out a form thinking she was exposed, you know, she did the assessment and it was only presumed, hence the orange. And then, you know, Jennifer saying she was cleared for work, ended up being cleared for work, and it turned out green. But then later on, she did it, and it turns out it was a confirmed case. You filter by employee, or you can click these pie charts here, and, you know, it filters out the table for you as well, and everything is sort of dynamically changing. Next is the daily interaction log that uh, Darren mentioned. Uh, so, like I said, say Jennifer, say Patricia gets uh, the disease, she clicks it, and then it says that the employees she interacted with were Elizabeth and Charles, and the non-employees were Mike, right? And then same idea with the table, go through it and click the, the form as well. You know, next is the daily check-in, and this is more so for, you know, the mental health of our employees. Working from home is definitely not easy, especially if, you know, you're living in a city where you didn't grow up in, you don't really know people around you. And uh, so we see here that, you know, Patricia filled out the form nine times, and out of the nine times, she asked for support twice. But at the same time, she communicated with people for, for those nine times. So, you know, it's a, not the biggest risk. Whereas, you know, you have here that, uh, out of the five times that Thomas filled it out, he needed support three times, and he only talked to one person one of those days. So, 
you know, maybe reach out to him saying, hey, as a company, what can we do to help, you know, build up that team morale? And then same idea, filter through the pie chart to, you know, see which employees are isolating, quarantining, and so on. And then the next two are travel requests and alternate work requests. You know, very simple. You know, where are you going? How long are you going for and why? Was it approved? Was it not approved? And then same with the, you know, travel request. The next one is incident report. This is another work in progress because I don't necessarily know how to show this when it comes to uh, the COVID virus specifically. Obviously, if it was a basic incident, this would do the job, but I'm still looking at new, uh, you know, renditions of this report to make it seem a bit more you know, COVID related. But, you know, it just goes through the classification, who entered it, when it happened, and then you can filter by COVID or, you know, if it wasn't just a regular HSC incident. And then another work in progress one is the inspection process flow. So like Darren said, you know, he filled out a, uh, oh, an inspection. I don't think we have any here. All right, so a weekly personal inspection. And then if you scroll down, you see that all the process numbers on the left hand side. So it gets a bit confusing. So, you know, by then you have to filter again by, let's say, Patricia. And then on the top right, you can filter exactly by process number. So if you go to the latest one and you go to the right over here, you can see the last time she filled out the, you know, the inspection, you scroll down, she actually got everything uh, uh, finished in regards to, you know, making her workspace as ergonomical as possible. Whereas if you go back a couple you know, rounds, I guess it's just duplicates, but you get the idea. And then finally, this little notes page, you know, just everything I said was in addition into words um, for when you actually get your hands on the Power BI file. I apologize if I spoke really fast, just cut on time here because I'm going to repeat anything or, you know, go over another specific sheet. Uh, I believe the Q&A is starting, so we can definitely do that. Yeah, so there is one question that I think you guys can answer. Erica is asking, how can the users enter their inputs? Is there an app or from the desktop? Um, so basically, I think, Erica, you're asking about how 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 people enter this, right? So I think, uh, Darren, you can probably answer this question, right? So talk about the, the forms as a whole and how would a customer get them? Yeah, so... Um... You know, if, if you are a NITRAC client already, <clears throat> you know, just use like we we use a tool to pump them over into your environment and then you just use your your existing user logins and all that and whatever devices um, you use to get get the get the forms in. Um, otherwise, you know, we do give you a login for both the um, the portal, which is you know, consider that more a desktop, right? You run it through the browser um, so uh, users can go in there. Um, enter these these forms, um, or go on to um, the stores and download iTrack Mobile. So if it, it's good for Android, iOS, which is the Apple devices, and also Windows uh, 10 devices too, right? So if you, all three platforms, um, if you go into the respective stores and search for iTrack, um, actually two of them will pop up. One is like iTrack kiosk, but you don't want that one. You want the other iTrack app. Um, and then again, we'll we'll give you logins for both of them, and then you just choose uh, which ones you want your users to use to get this data in. So, Erica, hopefully that answered your question. If you want to know something else, just feel free to take yourself off mute and ask. But uh, hopefully that uh, covers what you need. Um, so, wrap up with sort of the the community edition idea, maybe how that came to be. Yeah, I mean, really, you know, like, uh, I don't know how many of you know me personally, but um, I've got a bit of a background in my previous life on this stuff. I used to be a, a microbiology nerd uh, working in a lab um, dealing with, you know, foodborne pathogens and that. So, you know, to me, this this one was, um, you know, I saw this this COVID stuff coming and I knew, you know, how how big it was going to be and, and kind of the impact it's, it was going to have worldwide, right? So. You know, really, I went to uh, Trevor and the rest of my team and said, like, listen, you know, we've got uh, we've got the technology, we have the knowledge. So, you know, let's, you know, contribute like this is our time to, you know, pitch in and then help out here. Right. And this is how we can do it. So uh, we got the buy in from the team and, you know, worked um, uh, long hours with Michelle, who's on the call and Kasim to get this environment spun up and going. Uh, meanwhile, Trevor, you know, approached Microsoft because Microsoft was really interested in what we were doing too. 
um, Microsoft Canada, and and you know they they also um, chipped in some co-funding too, um, and then that also helped us you know um, expand th it to the you know quote unquote community edition, which is again you know free for use for for anyone who who wants to use it. So I think the last thing to mention to anybody else that's looking for more information, um, another good session would be the 2.30 HSE Expert Exchange session. There'll be uh, HSE people talking various topics and I'm sure COVID and returning work will come up as well. So if people are looking for more kind of of the same, but much more there and then people can also either use this chat even after the sessions uh, over for follow-up questions, you can also email us at either sales at Neosystems or support at Neosystems, and we'll be happy to answer those. And obviously, um, you know, uh, if you yeah, if you need any other information, uh, don't be afraid to reach out, and we'll, we'll help any way we can. Perfect. Thanks, everyone, for attending.